What I'm going to show you is how 156 people from 25 countries all over the five continents of this beautiful earth drop their lives, drop their patents, drop their dogs, wives, kids, school, jobs, and congregated to come to Brazil for 18 months to actually get this done. Because when we heard, a couple of years after Brazil was awarded the World Cup, we heard that the Brazilian government wanted to do something meaningful in the opening ceremony in the country that reinvented and perfected soccer until we met the Germans, of course. <laughs> but that's a different talk, and a different neuroscientist needs to talk about that. But what Brazil wanted to do is to showcase a completely different country, a country that values science and technology and can give a gift to millions, 25 million people around the world that cannot move any longer because of spinal cord injury. Well, we went to the Brazilian government, to FIFA, and proposed, well, let's have the key call for the 2014 World Cup be given by a Brazilian paraplegic using a brain control exoskeleton that allows him to kick the ball and to feel the contact with the ball. They looked at us, thought that we were completely nuts, and said, OK, let's try. <laughs> we had 18 months to do everything from zero, from scratch. We had no exoskeleton, we had no patients, we had nothing done. These people came all together, and in 18 months, we got eight patients in a routine of training and basically built from nothing this guy that we call Brazil Santos Dumont One. The first brain control exoskeleton to be built was named after the most famous Brazilian scientist ever, Alberto Santos Dumont, who in 19 of October 1901 created and flew himself the first control airship on air in Paris for a million people to see. Sorry, my American friends, I live in North Carolina, but it was two years before the Brothers, Wright brothers, flew on the coast of North Carolina. <laughs> Flight control is Brazilian. <laughs> so we went together with these guys, and we basically put this exoskeleton together, 15 degree of freedom hydraulic machine that can be commanded by brain signals, recorded by a non-invasive technology called electroencephalography, that can basically allow the patient to imagine the movements and send these commands to uh, the controls, the motors, and get it done. This exoskeleton was covered with an artificial skin invented by Gordon Shank, one of my greatest friends in Munich, to allow sensation from the joints moving and the foot touching the ground to be delivered back to the patient through a vest, a shirt, there is a smart shirt with micro-vibrating elements that basically deliver the feedback and fools the patient's brain by creating a sensation that is not a machine that is carrying him, but it's him who is walking again. So we got this going, and what you see here is the first time one of our patients, Bruno, actually walk. And it takes a few seconds because we are setting everything and you're going to see a blue light coming in front of the helmet because Bruno is going to imagine the movement that needs to be performed. The computer is going to analyze it. Bruno is going to certify it. And when he's certified, the device starts moving under the command of Bruno's brain. And he just got it right. And now he starts walking. After nine years without being able to move, he's walking by himself. And more than that, More than just walking, he's feeling the ground. And if the speed of the exo goes up, he tells us that he's walking again on the sand of Santos, the beach resort where he used to go before he had the accident. That's why the brain is creating a new sensation in Bruno's head. So he walks, and at the end of the walk, I'm running out of time already, he says, you know, guys, I need to borrow this thing from you when I get married because I want to walk to the priest and see my bride and actually be there by myself. Of course, he will have it whenever he wants. And this is what we wanted to show during the World Cup and couldn't, because, you know, for some mysterious reason, FIFA cut the broadcast in half. Uh, what you have going to see very quickly is Giuliano Pinto in the exo doing the kick a few minutes before we went to the pitch and did the real thing in front of the entire crowd. 
And the lights you even see just describe the operation. Basically, the blue lights pulsating indicate that the exo is ready to go. It can receive thoughts and it can deliver feedback. And when Bruno makes the decision to kick the ball, you're going to see two streams of green and uh, yellow light coming from the helmet and going to the legs, representing the mental commands that were taken by the exo to actually make that happen. And in basically 13 seconds, Giuliano actually did. You can see the commands. He gets ready, the ball is set, and he kicks. And the most amazing thing is, 10 seconds after he did that and look at us in the pitch, he told us, celebrating as you saw, I felt the ball. And that's priceless.